Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market and let's figure out what happened today. A pretty wild day today that we'll discuss and uh, figure out, well, I mean, what it really means going to next month of June, which is, again, in theory, uh, more often than not, Tesla's best month of the year. Will it be, again, Tesla's best month of the year this year, this coming June? Well, time will tell, but let's try to figure out what we can expect moving into it. So as usual, if you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. This is not financial advice, and I am not a financial advisor. Uh, of course, this is... Um don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. I forgot my like little intro thing there. And of course, my membership section is live. The link is down below for just uh, $2.99 a month. You get access to all my intraday thoughts, posts, updates, technical analysis, options, flow, etc. on Tesla every single day that the market is trading. So again, if that's something that interests you, the link is down below in the description of the video. But let's just get right into it. Tesla closing the day down over ever so slightly about 0.4% closing at just above $178 per share which compared to the market is a very slight underperformance but nothing too completely crazy right and we had a pretty decent swing a uh, day today as well it actually got me a little bit I'm not gonna lie um it, it kind of you know I wouldn't say spooked me out but I definitely took a tiny L where uh, I, I didn't really need to because the market for the, for the first half of the day was just puking itself out and then the second half of the day was like, yeah, never mind, JK, right? So you can see Tesla regained most of the gains that it did give out today. But with that being said, SPY and QQQ really came back really, really strong. SPY more so, QQQ, you know, even, right? Literally even, right? But Q, SPY especially just completely came back like ridiculously strong, setting up a hilarious looking candle, almost as funny as QQQ's candle. This is quite a candle, I must admit. This is something else entirely like my goodness what the hell am i looking at here um but we'll, we'll discuss that later on in the video briefly but tesla obviously is showing up yet another doji candle right we had a doji candle yesterday we had a doji candle today and essentially all these doji candles mean at least in this scenario especially considering we've been pretty much going sideways for like what two weeks now two and a half weeks whatever this you know little time frame is ever since all the way back here in the middle of may so half a month <laughs> we've been going pretty much sideways for a half a month um if, if, even if you include these days it's slightly almost a full month uh we've been pretty much range bound uh not really doing a whole lot right i do believe that's going to come to an end pretty soon actually though i do believe that that's going to come in there is a chance that we're still range bound potentially even for next week um, but don't forget, we have that vote coming out the week after that. So maybe it'll take that long, but I think it might be a little bit sooner than that as we kind of find our climax position here between these range bound, uh, you know, zones, if you will, right? We have this green trend line. If I zoom out, like I've been talking about for quite some time, that is, of course, acting as a major resistance, right? Obviously, started all the way back here late of last year, got rejected by it not too long ago over here on that pump we had on, you know, um, earnings and, of course, that China FSD news. And then, of course, we've been rage bound ever since, and it's still acting as a resistance. We got tapped by it once again a few about a week ago, yesterday, and even today. Actually, we pretty much uh, went up to it and got rejected by it once again, sitting again pretty much around the 180s. Now, again, remember, because this is a descending trend line, the 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 level to break in order to arguably turn bullish, um, it gets lower every day, right? So, for instance, you know, on Monday, you know, it'll be somewhere around pretty much 180 honestly like if you want to be really safe like if, if you want to be really really safe i definitely look for like a 182 to 183 break right if you want to be like extra safe about it but even above like 180 to 181 you can already start making you know a pretty decent argument the fact that we are breaking out because again it is descending right so keep that in mind however with that being said to the south side we still have and pretty much where we bounce off today we still have my you know 173 and a half roughly to about um, oh, sorry, 173 to 173 and a half ish level, right? Give or take, or you can make it simple, really just below 173 to make it really, really simple. And anything that has 173 and a decimal after that is arguably a support zone until, of course, it isn't, right? So it really depends on which level breaks first. The MACD is just pretty much neutral, just the, even the MACD is confused here, clearly, but it really comes down to which of these levels break first. Now, we're going to be looking at options flow as well. There's a bit, you know, interesting things to note on the options flow moving forward, but the thing that's interesting also, in my opinion, is the fact that SPY and QQQ, you can see, nice volume today, right? Pretty nice volume today. Tesla, very low volume today, surprisingly low volume today, even though the market had a like, phenomenal volume, like really good volume, Tesla pretty, you know, not very high volume today definitely like average if not lower than average right so you know that's a little bit i don't know if that's necessarily concerning or not but the fact that we're printing two doji candles the fact that the macd is just pretty much going sideways the fact that the rsi is 
pretty much going sideways. To me, this tells me that there is some serious momentum on Tesla here being built up and it is going to unleash relatively soon, can it be or could be as early as next week. And again, to determine the direction, it really comes down to the levels above 180 and ideally above 183, should be to the north side. Below, pretty much 173, we'll say to make it simple, should be to the south side. Again, to the north side, I think ultimately, it'll take some time, but I think ultimately sometime in June, you know, hitting even as high as like the 200-ish level, not impossible. To the south side, if we break below, hitting as low as about the 160 level, not impossible. Notice how they're both about $20 point range from where we are right now. $20 to the north side, right, which you can see here is about a 14% swing, but also about a 10% swing to the downside, also about a 20 dollar move right because we're sitting at 178 right 160 about 20 dollars 170 to 200 about 20 dollars so we're kind of right in the middle we're right in the dead smack middle right now right obviously obviously we'll take a look at the weekly chart here also not unfortunately giving us too much information like i said that um stochastic is starting to curl a little bit here showing you know maybe a little bit of momentum you know being stopped if you are like losing momentum a tiny bit you know potentially the macd is still looking pretty decent as well maybe not as you know it's still making higher highs and stuff like that but maybe you know maybe it's going to start potentially curling down a little bit as well maybe maybe the 160 move was going to be what makes the macd this green line come back to the red line almost like a retest if you will you know it'll be something like you know, it'll come down kind of like like this as the red line kind of keeps going up like this. It'll almost like it'll do a retest and then the green line will continue going upwards. You know what I mean? Like a retest of this kind of, you know, breakout that we had all the way down here. That's a possibility if we do take the route to about that 160 range, right? A very real possibility. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm keeping all these options open right now. The monthly candle we can see here also not really giving us too much information, mainly because, well, it's just a very neutral looking candle. It is an inside month candle, you can argue. I mean, I mean, to be fair, the last month's range was insane. So, you know, again, it's just, there's so much indecision right now, it feels like with Tesla stock. And it kind of makes sense, probably because we have a pretty important moment, if you will, in Tesla stock, potentially history coming up with that whole, uh, you know, the vote happening, right? I mean, Tesla, Elon, they're, they're really pushing people to vote, right? Clearly it's a big deal. And it could be that the stock stalls for the most part, pretty close to the vote or does a potential fake reaction even right not too long maybe a week before the vote and i do believe if it does a fake reaction to the vote for instance if it crashes into the vote i think that's bullish actually if it rallies into the vote i actually think that's bearish and i think it'll be a sell the news or potentially like a massive bull trap so you know take it for what it's worth right but it's really important in my opinion on the daily chart at least just to wait for these levels to break you can also make an argument the fact that we're pretty much setting up if you take a look at this, and if you take a look at pretty much like this right here, right, you can also argue the fact that we're setting up a descending triangle pattern, right? A descending triangle triangle pattern is bearish, unfortunately. It is a bearish pattern. Uh, go ahead and bring this out. Let's go out over here. Um, I don't know why this one shows that as a bullish pattern. It shouldn't be. Uh, to be fair, this is roughly what it looks like. Hopefully my camera's not blocking it. It's not, right? This is roughly what a descending triangle looks like, right? Which is kind of what we're printing over here. You can see, right? Pretty similar idea, right? And usually, again, not always, not always, but usually it does break to the downside. It is a bearish pattern. But like I always say, the pattern itself, whether the pattern is supposed to be a bearish pattern or supposed to be a bullish pattern in terms of the way it breaks out, you know, to the downside or to the upside, Overall, is irrelevant because it's not 100%. No pattern is 100%. Yes, this is, in theory, a bearish pattern. Yes, in theory, this should break to the downside. Yes, in theory, 160s should be more likely of a case here if this does truly break down to the downside, which it should. But it's not guaranteed. It is absolutely not guaranteed. And again, that's why I always say, just let the levels dictate it. Just let the breakouts dictate it. Just be patient. I know it's kind of boring. It is what it is, but just be patient with it. Just let the levels dictate it. Let it break above those levels I mentioned earlier and let it decide for us where that next movement is going to be. Obviously, there's always that risk that that breakout could be a trap in that, you know, respective direction, essentially. So like a bull trap, bear trap, whatever. But it still gives you a much higher probability, right? Because it's all about probability. It's all about our probability scan, right? Nothing in trading is ever 100%. No trade is 100%. No entry is 100% perfect. It's all about probability and, of course, risk management. But in this case, probability is what I'm referring to. So that's why, in my opinion, it's important to kind of, you know, wait for that and kind of, you know, let that do its thing, if that makes sense, right? 
I'll take a look at the uh, my favorite indicator here. We're trading dead smack in the center for the longest time. Weekly, we're still getting rejected by the uh, you know that center line, which is essentially that 20-day moving average, roughly. The monthly, we're still also just not that far off from the center as well. So Tesla is just kind of in a very limbo land, sort of neutral position here. It's not really oversold anymore. It's not really overbought anymore. I mean, it's definitely not overbought, at least on like the the larger time frames, right? The daily is not overbought or oversold. Like we're very, very, very neutral right now, and it really goes to show with how we been trading recently with just this sideways action very 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 like ridiculously neutral price action and ridiculously neutral close here so i know that's not the answer people want to hear i know people want to be like okay but is it going to 200 or is it going to 160 i know people just want to be told unfortunately you know no one knows unfortunately just nobody knows until we get a more decisive price action out of one of these ranges right out of this kind of you know range that we're just bound in for the past like half a month even so yeah, I mean, I, I just be patient with it. Now, taking a look at options flow uh, in the morning, right? I mean, obviously, as the market was selling off, we had a lot of puts coming in, right? We had a 1.34 million put come in, 190 strike, which is obviously quite in the money, especially when it came in. That was when Tesla was at pretty much 176, right? For next week, June 7th, next week. So that's pretty interesting to note, right? It's a pretty decent, uh, you know, that's a lot of premium to put up for a weekly expiration uh, put. Even though it is in the money, it's still a weekly expiration put. However, we also had a 1.53 million call come in. 180 strike, but this is September 20th. So definitely giving themselves a lot more room here, even though it is slightly out of the money. There's a lot more room for them to play with. It's not a weekly, right? So that's important there, right? But ultimately, it was kind of mixed in, uh, up and down all over the place. Tesla did ultimately close with about a 222, almost 23 million uh, a bullish flow, which is good. Now, taking a look at Cheddar Flow, which, by the way, both these option services I have a link to below if you're interested with a discount if you sign up as well. So definitely check it out. But uh, looking at Cheddar Flow quickly here, this is what I'm looking at now is going to be uh, sold options, right? So over here we look at bought options. And these are sold options, right? And what we see here is pretty interesting as well. In the morning, we actually had a cash secured put being sold 195 strikes, so well above where the stock is trading at, which was at about 180 for next week. So clearly this whale, I mean, they're so far underwater, um, but they clearly think Tesla will be above 195 by next week, or they're just willing to buy and just take in that premium regardless because they don't really care too much. Again, you have to remember, there's we don't know the true intentions behind these options. You also want to take them with a grain of salt, right? But with that being said, we had a 1.4 million cash or uh, uh, covered call, so selling calls against their shares, essentially. I'm, I'm assuming against shares. Could be a naked cover call. Who knows? But I'm assuming against shares, also 1.4 million, also for next week, 185 call. Clearly, they don't think Tesla's going above 185. Okay, so a bit of conflicting matters here. Here. Maybe it's the same person doing this trade. Who knows, right? Uh, another one over here, though. Another 1.4 million. So cash secured put 190, similar to the one we had down here at 195, but this is 190. And another one also for 190 up here. Another 1.4 million, also for next week. So clearly, some whales are thinking that Tesla potentially can go up to as high as 190, right? We'll see if that's the case or not. I mean, again, you don't know the true intentions. They could just be very happy taking in this premium, and they think ultimately Tesla maybe you know in the longer run will be above 190. They don't really care about it that much right now. They'll just take in that premium. They don't think Tesla is going to make too many moves, and they're just happy with it. So again, you don't know the full intentions behind. It. But nonetheless, if you were to look at it in just a very raw sense, they're probably expecting it to be a, at about 190 by next week. We'll see if that's the case or not. Um, I personally would be surprised. But again, if it does break above this level of about 180, 180 to 183, we'll just say a very real possibility to get to 190 next week. That actually is quite realistic. Um, but yeah, all that being said and done, that's kind of the main thing I'm looking at right now. So again, if this is the kind of information that you find useful, helpful, informative, whatever, this is essentially what I share with my members throughout the day, every single day uh, in my membership section. Down below in the description of the, of the video is the link for just $3 a month. But with all that being said and done, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. And as usual, I'll see you on Monday. Peace.